Good morning, afternoon and evening my crazies. My name's Angela, I'm the crazy poppy lady and welcome back. Today is um, a video that's a little bit different to my normal. Today we're going to be speaking about Aragurumi written patterns. That's right, I'm tackling the written patterns. Let's so come on and let's go and see one what patterns I've chosen, two what I'm going to be chatting about and three what tips and tricks have I got for you this week? So before I get started, I'll give you a little bit of background. My first thing I ever made was actually an aragurumi. I attempted to make a granny square. I couldn't get my head around it, even with help from my big sis. Um, so much so, we gave up. Put I gave up, put my crochet hook down and carried on uh, having a happy drink. But um, I decided I was not going to let crochet beat me. I am so happy and thankful I chose that. And so instead I have found a pattern. Oh, where are you? This one here, which is available um, on YouTube. So I thought, why not give it a go? I popped to the shop, I grabbed some, oh crikey, that's coming out bright. <laughs> it's not that bright really. Um, I grabbed some cheap orange, a bit of beige and set to work. Now, this pattern is really lovely and easy to follow and is in the description box down below. I'm sorry, off the top of my head, I can't actually remember what it's called, but I know I've got the link for you. Now, this is a, a brilliant example, which is why I've kept it. This is a brilliant example of tension and how your tension can change the size of a project. These are all done with exactly the same hook, with exactly the same yarn. This was my first one, and this was the second, a third, and fourth. And as you can see, as I got more confident with the pattern, my pattern became bigger. Now these were actually done on a, a three millimeter with a, a DK hook. So yeah, there is, a, and look, it's not because of the way I'm holding it. There is easily a size a variation in these. So I love showing those, just to make you understand that when you first start your tension's going to be tight but as you relax it's going to get better and not only that when I first started crocheting I did not read anything I did not understand anything and I did not know anything about how to use a, a basic crochet hook this isn't the hook by the way I can't find the original but basically when I first started I thought this little gap the little gap right here was what measured it, not actually the nape of the neck. This isn't really the best one to show, it's quite short. Let's get my favourites. Okay, so this is the bit you measure the size of your um, loop on, not this little bit here. So of course, with that very first pumpkin, I was pulling the yarn so tight, it was so hard to manoeuvre because I didn't understand what I was doing. Um, but as I became more confident and actually realised that you're meant to use this section as well of your hook and it's not just there to look pretty, <laughs> it improved a lot. <laughs> right, so that's just a quick little background, bit of information about me um, so that I can impart a little bit of knowledge that I've found in the years that I've now been crocheting aragurumi as well as other things but we're only talking aragurumi today gang so as i mentioned there are a lot of different tutorials on youtube 
sometimes when you pick an item that you think could be complicated it's actually a lot easier because it is broken down into stages so you do the sta the one stage at a time and you keep going until you get that stage right and then you add in details and everything else so sometimes your projects may not resemble <laughs> what they're meant to be and no it's not going to be a mushroom once I've sewn it all together I will add pictures of what this is going to be at the end of this video hopefully if I can get it done before this video needs to go up right so as I said, I've done lots and lots of different patterns. I've started off, I started off, of course, with YouTube and then I won a book and I made a frog. And I actually made two in the end from this pattern using two different weights of yarn. OK, which also meant two different hook sizes. There is a link, hopefully, if I can find it to the video showing both of these um, frogs and basically saying how just by changing the weight of your yarn can change the size of your um, aragurumi okay then of course i had i had to do it i had to make him but he was out of a magazine and that was um inside crochet and it was number 121 so i made this guy ever so happy with myself because yeah really cute and I even added extra details I actually added a nose onto him by using the methods I'd learnt from this one and I put a smile because he's cute with his smile right um, and of course I kept going and going and I made a dragon now this dragon is absolutely immense but my daughter's hidden it from me because she says he's not allowed to live in my craft room so I might have to make another that'll be two of those um, and then I um, I was lucky again and I won another book this one I won from Instagram and this one you'll have seen quite a bit and there's also links to the playlist for this book as well and a tried and tested that I used this on and this is one of the cheeky guys from it he has, he's lost his glasses I tried to make him a monocle but my snippers didn't snip the glasses the wire was too thick but getting back to the aragurumi what I have noticed is although we are using a single crochet US terms or a double crochet UK terms and then the book I'm working out of at the moment this is a spoiler alert the um, book review for this will be coming up shortly if you're watching this a month in advance it will already be up and pinned Pokemon now these for um four different books Oh, I'll get there, I'll get there, I'll get there. Their Aragurumi patterns are all written differently. How can they be different? I just don't know because all we're really doing is working single crochet in the round. If you're in using American terms or of course a double crochet in the round if you're using English terms. And then... The shaping is just in where you're placing increases or decreases of that single slash double crochet. How can they write the pattern so differently? Are you ready? I'm going to be popping on screen. Which way? Um, that way. I'm going to be popping on screen now. A little box just here. Now this first one is the inside crochet. It is the UK terms. Now, as you can see here, I've copied out the first five rounds. As far as I'm concerned, it's, it's not really a copyright issue because quite a few are different patterns. Actually, all of the patterns I've chosen today all start with exactly the same numbers and same stitches and everything else. It's just the way that they are written. Now, within each book, it will explain what the brackets that they use mean or the terminologies that they use but your best thing to do with this is to read it out loud and pretend you're listening to somebody <laughs> so of course your first round would, um, starts with six double crochets in a, a ring in this one basically meaning a magic ring or a magic loop and then add your six double crochet in singles if you're in the US 
Then, of course, round two, you're increasing into each of those stitches by placing two double crochet in each DC around. Your next one, round three. Now, this is in brackets. Now, this is to tell you that it is a repeat. So whatever is within the brackets, you repeat until you get to the end of the round. So it's two double crochets in the next DC, followed by two double crochets. And then they tell you at the end of the row, of course, how many stitches you should have at the end. So it's a good idea to practice counting you, your stitches as you finish each round. Round four, two double crochets in the next DC around. Uh, sorry, two double crochets in the next DC and then three DC. So basically this first section here is telling you to do an increase and the last is telling you how many stitches between each increase. Round five. DC in the next 2 DC and then a 2 DC around totaling a 30. So that is how inside a crochet uh, magazine, which is a UK magazine in UK terms, that's how they type out the Aragorumi patterns. Right now on to the Aragorumi treasures. Now this one is written in USA terms, which for me personally I find a lot easier as that's what I learnt with. So Already that's one step I don't have to do, which is flipping around the terminology in my head to translate it. Right, so around one is start six single crochet in a magic ring. So you've got six stitches. You then increase in all six stitches, in brackets, 12. That's, your, of course, your stitch count at the end of the round. Round three is a single crochet in the next cr stitch, increase in the next stitch, repeat six times. 18 stitches. Round four, single crochet in the next two stitches, increase in the next and repeat six times, 24. Round five, single crochet in the next three, increase in the next, totaling 30 stitches at the end. So basically, that's how they've written their one out. Now, as I said, I like these books. I've made two items from them. I can't fault the way that they write it. I personally prefer a shorter abbreviated version which I will get on to right at the end because I've got to type it up still. Now the third book that I worked from was Happy Garumi. Again this one is the USA Terms. Round one was chain two and single crochet into the second chain from the hook. That's right no magic ring on this one. This, so this one makes you start by working in the chain which does sometimes leave a little gap at the top. Sometimes it doesn't. It depends on how tight your chain work is. I personally prefer the magic ring, but um, each to their own, isn't it? And it's always worth trying both styles. Now the round one is a chain two, six single crochet in the second chain from the hook, meaning the first working into the first chain you create. Round two is two single crochets in each stitch. In other words, an increase. Round a three, single crochet one, two single crochets in the next. And you repeat that six times. Round four, single crochet two, two single crochet in the next. Repeat six times. Um, and around five, they had said single crochet in each stitch around because that's how that section of the pattern are finished. I'm not telling you which creature it was though. But for the most part, you end up with round five always being a single crochet three followed by the increase or two in the next stitch as they would have written it in this one if that was the pattern um so that's how they wrote their one and then the last one up is the pokemon crochet now this one actually had me stumped for a few moments okay i had started it late at night you shouldn't start new projects late at night. <laughs> Little tip there. But it is written very differently to the other ones that I've already shown you today. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Here's the box so that I can explain what I mean. Right, so as you can see here, round one, it says six single crochet in a magic ring. Same standard as every other. Then he says two single crochets in each stitch. Again, same as every other, it's just that increase round. 
Now the next one is two single crochets in each second single crochet. Yeah, I'm taking a moment of silence. Are you there? Are you there? Are you with me? Um, because what they mean here is that you crochet until you get to the second stitch and you add the two in. So that means that when you get to round three, you carry on crocheting until you hit that third single crochet and then you add the increase in. And the fourth, right? Uh, sorry, the fifth round has the same thing. You crochet round until you hit that fourth stitch where you add that increase in. Honestly, that's what you do to, <laughs> to get a mushroom. It's not a mushroom. <laughs> but um, I, I was really perplexed with this one. I was really slightly confused. Actually, very confused. Because I'm like, how many stitches am I meant to put in before I hit that number? And I'm like, how daft was I being? I was being proper daft. But if it's a pattern... And a method that, that you, they've written that you don't understand. Sometimes it can take you a moment to do a bit of a brain reset, or at least it does with me, to then cotton on to the fact that it's just count round to the second stitch and then put the increase in. Now, and this pattern was written exactly the same way for the decrease as well. And so were the, all of the other previous patterns. The, the numbering and the pattern structure was all very similar. So... If you'd increased on an increase round, you would decrease on a decrease round and pretty much the write up was the same. Now, I'm not going to worry about typing that up and showing you that. Just believe me, OK? <laughs> right. And for my last pattern ish up is how I like them being written. I hate having extra words in a pattern when I don't really need them. OK, so as you saw with the Pokemon that in each just through me two words in each but um this is how i like them written and that is round one magic ring six single crochets six in the brackets <laughs> round two increase times six 12 in the brackets round three single crochet one increase times six 18 in the brackets round four single crochet two increase times six 24 in the brackets. And round five, single crochet three increase times six, 30 in the brackets. To me, that looks a lot, yeah, <laughs> that looks a lot more tidy and it's easier personally for me to read. What I would love to know from you guys is which one out of the five that I've shown you today do you like using? Do you find the easiest and have you actually done Aragurumi before? <laughs> right so right so that is it for today's video keep your eyes out for more arigurumi tips and tricks of videos and explaining arigurumi videos i've got a small list going just a small one so hopefully i will have some more content for you soon that will help you understand arigurumi a, a little bit more please remember to like the video share it out with your mates if you fancy it and also leave me a comment in the comment section down below. I love to know your experiences of Aragurumi, which method you preferred for the written patterns and anything else you fancy adding in. <laughs> right, that is it for me for today. I will see you all really, really soon. So please remember, stay chilled, stay happy and keep crafting. Goodbye, everybody.